So, Assalamualaikum and good day. My name is Rahana Nabila and I am a psychology intern from the Student Guidance Unit and I will be your speaker for today's Lighthouse Show. And today's show is titled Worry or Anxiety. So, these two terms is quite well known. Okay, uh, especially the term anxiety, since mental health awareness has grown in popularity, people have started to use the term anxiety more and more often. However, when you go through any kind of difficulties or obstacles or challenges, how can you know if the concern, concern that you're feeling is actually a feeling of worry or anxiety? So let's find out more about it. Okay. Firstly, I'll be showing a few examples that can make you become very concerned or make you feel very worried or anxious. Um, the first example that I will be giving is when you lose your pet, okay? Um, you start to worry about their whereabouts, you start to think about the pet's well-being or whether the pet will come back to you or not. And then the second example is something that I think um, a lot of you will uh, relate very well to it. I personally can relate very well to it. It is when you need to give a presentation in front of a class. So when you need to give a presentation, you start to feel um, nervous and then you start to stutter. It's hard for you to memorize your script and then you start to lose your voice or you start to sweat and those kind of things. Lah. And the last example that I will be giving is when you have an upcoming exam. You might not feel confident about it or you the exam is very very hard so even when you're studying you still keep on thinking on whether you can perform well or not so when you're in this kind of situation are you actually feeling worried or are you actually feeling anxious okay so to know what kind of feeling you're experiencing let's take a look at the differences okay both of these feelings actually have a bit of a similarity both of them are marked by a sense of concern and possible stress. And actually, to put it simply, both of this is interrelated. Worry is actually a part of anxiety. Worry is actually a part of anxiety. When you're feeling worried, when you experience it for a long period of time, it can slowly transition to the feeling of anxiety. But how can you actually know you are at which point? Are you actually at the point of being worried or has it transitioned into anxiety? So let's take a look at the differences. First of all, um, worry, it's very specific. It is due to some specific events. For instance, you are worried about a calculus. I'm sorry. May I know if it has started? Can you guys see me? Okay, thank you. Um, you can hear me well, right? Is there any kind of lagging issues? Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's get back to it then. Mm, let me present again. I forgot to check. Yeah, I, can, I did not present it again. Let me share again. Sorry for the sudden checking. Okay. 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 So you guys can see it, right? Okay, let's get back to it. Lah. Okay, sorry. Okay, so worry, it's very specific. It's due to specific events. Okay, for example, you're worried about a calculus exam or you're worried about an English presentation. You're worried about your, you, you know, your pet, you lost your pet. You're worried about specific events. Whereby anxiety, it's more generalized. You're worried about all exams. Even though you have completed the exam, even though you perform well in the exam, you're still worried. So that is how anxiety is. You're worried about all types of presentation, even though you haven't done it. You're worried before, during, and even after the presentation. And worry tends to reside in our minds. So it's limited to only our thoughts. 
you know, you're thinking about, you know, when you lost your pet, you're thinking about the whereabouts, you're concerned about the well-being on whether your pet will come back to you or not. But it's only limited in your thoughts, in your mind only. But when it comes to anxiety, it affects both the body and the mind. Okay, the worry, the, the worry thoughts is there. But at the same time, you might stutter, you might sweat, and you start to sh shake or tremble, or you start to have an increased heart rate. So when you have both the worry thoughts and physical symptoms, most likely you're inclined to anxiety. And because of that, anxiety is more long-standing. Okay? It occurs for a longer period of time. Um, it's harder for you to um, stop the feeling or like uh, cool down the feeling or handle the feeling. While worry, it's more temporary. Once you settle the issue, the feeling of worry will be gone. Once you finish your English presentation or once you finish your calculus exam or once you found your pet, you will not be worried anymore. And because of that, it does not impact your professional or personal functioning. Because once the issue is settled, the feeling will disappear. Uh, but when it comes to anxiety, it could impact your daily life because of the constant worry thoughts, because of the constant anxiety, it's harder for you to focus on your studies, your work, your relationship with other people, your hobbies. Simply, it's harder for you to function well on a day-to-day -day basis. And due to that, anxiety is harder to control. But that doesn't mean that it's uncontrollable. It's just that it's a bit harder to control as opposed to worry that is much more controllable. Okay. So when I stated these differences, does it mean that anxiety is something that you should avoid at all costs? Does it mean that when you're feeling anxious, it's something bad? Does it mean that you should be worried? You should not feel any kind of anxiety? The answer is not necessarily. Why? Because Marquez in 2019 stated that anxiety is actually your body's natural threat response system. When your brain believes you are in danger, it sends out a series of signals to your body resulting in a fight or flight response. So what is a fight or flight response? Let me give you an example. So you're walking on a quiet road and then suddenly you see these two robbers that's trying to rob you. So you encounter a dangerous situation. So you feel very anxious, right? So the anxious feeling will trigger this response. You will either fight the robbers or you will run away. So that is why anxiety is not something that you should avoid, something you should feel bad when you're feeling, because it is something that is natural and can actually save you when you're going to, or when you encounter any kind of dangerous situation. And because of that, I would like to state that anxiety is normal. Okay, there's nothing wrong with feeling anxious. There's nothing wrong if you start to like tremble or shake, you start to stutter, you have an increased heart rate. There's nothing wrong with it. Because in life, you will always have your ups and downs. Okay, You're not always going to be very successful, very happy. You're going to have your downs also. And doesn't mean that you also you always need to be strong. You, also, you always need to be happy despite uh, going through tough times. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be worried. It's okay to be anxious. In your life, you will go through different, different experiences. So it's natural for you to feel different, different kind of emotions because every emotion serves a purpose. And just like anxiety, it is a natural threat response system. So anxiety is normal. And since we are experiencing anxiety uh, in our life uh, normally, uh, I'll be showing, I will be sharing some ways to cope with anxiety. Um, the first one is to exercise. Depends on you lah. If you like to go on a walk, if you like to go um, on a run, you want to do some sports, or you want to go to the gym, any sort of exercise uh, for at least three times a week. For 30 minutes, pun, that's enough. Uh, because exercise can actually boost your mood, calm your mind, and reduce the time needed to fall asleep. And from exercise also, because it reduced the time needed to fall asleep, it could also improve your sleep. Okay. Another way to improve your sleep is by taking care of your sleep hygiene and sleep schedule. So sleep schedule is basically you making sure that you wake up and you sleep at the same time. Okay, You sleep at 11 and you wake up at 6. So you make sure you have that fixed schedule so that you can sleep better. 
And when it comes to sleep hygiene, what is sleep hygiene actually is? Okay, a person who has good sleep hygiene means that they put themselves in a good position or a good situation that can help them fall asleep better. Okay? Some example of a good sleep hygiene is making sure that your room is quiet and dark before you go to sleep, avoiding any alcohol or caffeine intake, or avoiding using any kind of electronic devices 30 minutes before you go to sleep. Okay. So why is it important for you to make sure that you have a good sleep? Because when you sleep well, you can recharge your body well, and you can go through your daily lives better. So it will reduce the chances of you encountering any kind of uh, issues, difficulties, or challenges that could actually cause anxiety. Then the next method is when you are experiencing anxiety. So you may do deep breathing. And the technique of deep breathing that I'm going to be sharing today is using the square breathing technique. So what is the square breathing technique? So this technique, um, it revolves a lot around the number four. Okay, very simple. Okay, first of all, you need to breathe in for four seconds. You need to hold your breath for four seconds. You need to breathe out for four seconds. And you need to hold your breath again for four seconds. And then you repeat the cycle for a few minutes. Why do you need to do this? Because anxiety can really cause you to hyperventilate. Okay, hyperventilate is basically when you start to have irregular breathing. It's like, yeah. <laughs> which is very common when you are feeling very anxious, right? So you can, you can feel your heart rate and then you have difficulty breathing. So by using this technique, slowly it could help you to regulate your breathing again. It is best if you can breathe in with your nose and breathe out with your mouth, but understandably, it could be hard for you to control that when you are hyperventilating. So you can do it slowly, um, as as much as comfortable as you are uh, and then slowly you regulate your breathing um, to a normal pace and the last method that i will be sharing is actually journaling you can journal you can keep a diary you can keep a note anything that you are comfortable with just because the process of writing down your thoughts your feelings your experiences can actually be calming because it kind of feels like you're venting out what you are feeling, what you are thinking. And at the same time, you can also keep track on the triggers. So when you journal, you know lah, um, if a certain situation or any objects can make you feel anxious. So you can learn on how to cope with that situation better so that you won't feel as anxious or you can handle your anxiety better. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that's why if you have any kind of presentation, if you know, you need to present in front of a class and you start to feel nervous, restless, tense, increased heart rate, and then you have difficulty concentrating and you have sleeping problems the night before or you start to sweat or tremble, it is absolutely okay, okay? That doesn't mean that you're not good at presenting. It's just that you are actually stepping out of your comfort zone. Standing in front of a crowd, presenting some information is not easy for everyone. It is not within your comfort zone and you are just feeling anxious because of it. If you are able to complete the presentation despite being outside of your comfort zone, despite being anxious, then that is something that you should focus on. You were able to complete it despite the circumstances. Rather than focusing on, oh, I was so anxious, you should be proud that you were able to present. Okay? But how can we know if the anxiety is too much. How can we know if it is no longer a normal anxiety that we experience in our life? When is it actually disruptive? Okay, there are two indicators that the anxiety is too much. The first is when it causes significant emotional distress. Significant, okay, not just normal stress, significant emotional distress. The second indicator is when it impairs your ability to function. When you are constantly anxious and you are constantly significantly stressed because of it, it's harder for you to function in your daily life. It's harder for you to focus on your studies. It's harder for you to focus on a relationship, on your work, just anything in your life. Then 
that means it has started to become disruptive or simply said too much. Okay, when this happened, um, we don't really, it's not really anxiety anymore, it's more on anxiety disorders. And today I'll be, sh I'll be sharing three types of anxiety disorder. The first is social anxiety disorder, which is an intense fear of social situations that they may avoid them altogether or endure them with great distress. Okay, the key term is intense and also great distress. Yeah. I understand that for a lot of people, there are some days where you feel like you don't want to interact with other people, you don't really want to socialize or join any kind of social gathering. Um, you just want some time alone. Um, it's tiring for you to think about interacting with other people. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have social anxiety disorder. Okay, it's okay if you have times where you want to be alone. It's okay. But when it comes to social anxiety disorder, the fear is very intense, very, very intense, that they would try to avoid socializing altogether. Going to the mall, going to the class, going to a market is hard for them. Okay, it's okay to have some time alone. Okay, don't, don't worry. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have social anxiety disorder. And the next type is generalized anxiety disorder, GAD. Okay. Um, the definition is that it is an excessive anxiety and worry that is not limited to one object, situation, or activity. Again, the key term is excessive, excessive anxiety and worry. And when it comes to GAD, they are not only anxious about one thing, they are anxious, excessively anxious about everything. They are worried about their financial, their relationship, their studies, their work even though things are actually going okay. But they are excessively worried, oh, what if I go bankrupt? What if my relationship don't work out? What if I don't do well in my studies? Even though they are actually doing well in this kind of aspects. And that is GAD. And the last type of anxiety disorder is phobia. So phobia is a fear of object or situation that exceeds the actual threat post. So what is exceeds the actual threat post? Let me give you an example. Okay. okay, if this person is scared of cockroaches, okay, lipas, scared of cockroaches, and then, uh, and then he or she goes into the room and they see the cockroach in the room and then they feel scared. The one is okay because the cockroach is threatening to them, okay, especially if it's coming to you, then it's scary, lah. very, very scary. But the definition of exceeds the actual threat post is when a person looks at a picture of a cockroach and they have this intense fear just by looking at the picture, okay? Do note that there is the, a difference between feeling disgusted and feeling scared, okay? When you look at a picture of cockroach, you're like, oh, if you're feeling disgusted, it's okay. But if you have this intense fear, intense fear just by looking at the picture, even though it's actually not threatening you, then that one is more related to phobia, okay? And since we are on the topic of phobia, let me share with you some examples or some types of phobia that is actually that actually exist um, around us. Um, the first is acrophobia, which is the fear of heights. This one is quite common. Um, if a person have acrophobia, most likely they would avoid using a glass elevator because they can see it going up and that might be scary for them or they would avoid going on a hike okay the second is ilurophobia which is a fear of cats but ironically you know when it comes to cat the more scared you are of them right, if you're scared of cats they will come to you like they can smell fear i'm not sure why but anyways ilurophobia is actually the fear of cats Okay. The third is agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is the fear of being out in open and busy areas. For example, like a marketplace, a mall, class, and people with this kind of phobia usually is due to two reasons. First is because um, they are very scared of making mistakes in front of other people. 
even if they make the smallest mistake, they will feel greatly embarrassed. They will feel very, very embarrassed. Um, second is because that they fear they won't be able to escape if there is any danger situation. Okay, for instance, you are at a mall, and since there are many people, you are scared if a fire do happen, you cannot escape on time. So this, the people with agoraphobia, they tend to avoid any kind of busy and open areas at all costs. And next is nyctophobia. Nyctophobia is the fear of the dark. Lah. Um, if you go to sleep, you prefer having a bedroom light or you don't turn off your light because the dark is very scary to you. So that one is nyctophobia. Okay, so I have shared um, some anxiety disorders uh, when the anxiety becomes too much or disruptive. And I am pretty sure that some of you might be able to relate to this type of disorder as well, okay? You might think, like, oh, the symptoms is something that I can relate, the symptoms is something that I experience, and you start to become more and more concerned about it, and you start to wonder if you do have this anxiety disorder. Um, a suggestion that I would strongly, strongly suggest if you can relate or you become concerned um, by this disorder, is for you to seek professional help, okay? Uh, the Student Guidance Unit currently have four trainee counsellors and two registered counsellors, and we are very, very willing uh, for you to come in for any sessions. So if you have any kind of concern, if you feel like um, you can relate to it too well, uh, you can come to us and go for a few sessions to find out uh, on how to handle or uh, and to find out what is actually going on okay the reason why i strongly suggest for you to seek professional help is because i would like for i would love that it's actually not like i would love for people to avoid self-diagnosing okay although it is great that mental health is gaining more awareness but since more and more people are sharing the symptoms, sharing the types of disorder, more and more people are also self-diagnosing. Um, uh, but let me tell you that when it comes to mental health, it is so much more than that, okay? It's not just getting an answer from a 20-minute talk, just like today, okay? It's, it's not as simple as that. You need to do multiple sessions for you to truly understand what is going on with you mentally. Okay, um, like I said, anxiety is something that is commonly used and there are times where people self-diagnose themselves as, as having anxiety disorder, but actually, like I said, anxiety is actually normal. So please do seek professional help. Uh, the SGU unit is actually free, the sessions are free, any kind of uh, unit and students it uh, doesn't matter if your issues are severe or not, if it's academic related, personal related, you can still come by and we'll be willing to help you out. No problem at all. The most important thing is for you to not self-diagnose. That's all. Okay? So this is the end of our Lighthouse show or talk today. Uh, we have learned uh, or explored together about worry or anxiety. Um, I hope that it went okay. I hope that it was okay. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me. Um, we'll be seeing you guys next week. Uh, thank you so much. And for the students, don't forget to fill in your score run. Um, I'm pretty sure we have sent the link. If we have not, uh, we'll send the link um, as soon as possible. Okay. See you next week with a new topic. Thank you so much. Um, and goodbye.